So that's that's what that's some, techie stuff. some techie stuff. You don't need to know. It's <laughs> So good. All right. So what we're going to do today, you guys, is we're going to have Lauren on in a second and then we're going to have a little session with Lauren. But I want you guys to start now any comment or any questions that top of mind, whether it's in depth, a quick question, anything specific to business or the industry mindset, anything, put it in the chat because after Lauren, we're going to do a really like a rapid fire kind of Q&A. We'll go from there. But the best the best questions will be answered. Okay, so do we want to bring on Lauren? We'll bring on Lauren. Awesome. Okay, okay, okay. I'll start from the beginning. I'm Lauren, <laughs> 21 year fitness professional. <laughs> and I incorporate energetics into the strategy of diet, exercise, and self care. This is my mom, Roseanne. And I brought her because she loves you. And I wanted her to reflect some things to you also. So yes, we love you so much. So I told her, I was like, you have to be here. She is not a morning person. This is a huge deal. <laughs> I'm so happy. <laughs> okay. So I wanted to share this with you and like with everybody who's maybe like, whatever. So you have helped me take a 21 year fitness career and break it up into scalable offers. And you helped me come back into my power from when my business closed. And the most incredible thing for me this year has been just extraordinary is that I found you when my business closed, when my brick and mortar gym closed, and I was so sad and devastated. And then after I went through some deep emotional work in 2021, I was like, this is the person that I want to help recalibrate my financial status and my career. So signing up with you and doing this has been incredible. And the outcome that I wanted from doing the influencer coach mastermind was to have like the bones of my new system because my gym was based on my own system. And I really wanted to come out with that outcome. And I did. And so I just feel like this huge full circle of being like at my lowest in my career to now like recalibrated is just been incredible. And you know, my mom loves you and she's been with like almost every training, basically. I'm like, Steph's, Steph's on, do you want to watch? <laughs> so that's what I, I love you guys so much. Honestly, like it, it just means the world to me that like, like I know that you're so grateful for like me and what you discovered and all these things, but I just want to reflect, reflect back to you that you're the one who decided I'm going to create this. You're the one who decided I'm going to, I'm going to learn, I'm going to implement, I'm going to show up. Like you come into everything since I've known you for almost a year now, you show up, you do the work, you know? And so like, that's back on you. You're the one who's deciding I'm going to implement, I'm going to show up, I'm going to make this work. I'm going to listen. Like there's so many people who show up, but don't take action. You're here, you're in it like heart and soul. And I've seen that since day one. And it's just, it's remarkable. Thank you. Did you have? Yes. I just wanted to say, we've been through some pretty dark times just throughout the world. And I remember when she said to me, I met this woman and she says, she's really fascinating. And I said, in what way? She said, well, she helps people. And then she showed me one of your videos. And it was just so enlightening to see that in such kind of terror that a lot of people have been in, that it was so enlightening to see somebody that was above it all and was not going to let it get them down. And then to help people and then help them with striving to what they do the best and make money at it was just amazing. It was just amazing. I'm so grateful that she, your path crossed her way. I really thank am. you so much, you guys. I wasn't expecting this. <laughs> I got, like I just I'm I I'm so I feel so emotional right now. Like in the best way, it it means the world to me. And I love Lauren. I like like I said to Lauren, like but you chose to find the light too. You know what I mean? Like you chose to see the good in this. You chose to figure out that there's something more and create something more. And so it's just, you know, I, I love doing what I do. And you guys, you guys know this, you guys are in my world, but it, it just like you, you've created this for yourself. 
You know, it's so easy to see other people do something and just be like, oh, that's cute and inspiring and motivational, but it's another thing to be like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pull up a chair, I'm gonna do the work too, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make a change for myself. And so it's just, I commend you. Like, I, I'm so grateful. And the reason that, that I, it's so easy for me to keep building is for, like, because of people like Lauren. You show up, your heart and soul is in it. And so I just, I'm, I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful. You guys are amazing. We love you. We love you. So. <laughs> yeah, my, my mom, I think like after like the first training that she heard me watching, she goes, oh my God, I've been praying for someone like this to come into your life. <laughs> it was like she could breathe again because I've been in business programs. I've been throwing spaghetti at the wall and like trying in all the wrong ways. So I never stopped, but it was like, you are just this, Oh, like you're so tuned in, like you're, you're just so there. So I, I really, really appreciate you. So I wanted to have her here. Thank, Thank you. I appreciate you guys so much. Lauren, what is your question? Oh, you got your notebook, oh, your notebook of questions. No, 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 Tell me what's one. going on. One. Okay. So clearly I listened to the blueprint and I'm in the first, you know, the first phase of it. So as far as looking at the signature offer, the thing that I really am known for and that at the gym, I gather people. So I've been doing rehab work with men who they're like, my hip hurts. And I'm like, here, let me show you all this stuff. And they're like, oh my God. And then the women are like, your figure is so good. And then they'll work out with me. And it's been a long time to like feel good in my body, all of my chronic pain stuff. And so now all of a sudden I'm like, my aesthetic is banging. And my personality, the women aren't intimidated by it. They're like, how do I do this? So I'm kind of like, okay, my signature program can be right and tight because I'm going to teach people how to restore the function and then go to the next level and like tweak the body of however they want the aesthetic to look. So mm -hmm. my, my question is like to not over deliver in that signature program. I have a really good macros program that I pre-recorded all the videos step-by-step. Step. How do you think, look at me, I'm sh shaking. How do you think, um, how can I coach like, like as a signature offer in my head before I listened to that one of the blueprint, I thought, oh, well, if I'm diet and exercise, the signature program is going to be diet and exercise. But if it's really the thing that I'm like known for, yeah. Like how do I, like, if somebody wants a diet, I'm like, no, my signature program is just restoring the body like how do you think I should scale and work in so you can have two you can have two programs one is the fit like one is the 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 workout the physical and the, the second one can be the macros and but it can they can both be your signature oh okay does that confuse you or does that make sense no it does but it's like I'm just like so like how do I you know redo this so I'm just surprised <laughs> What do you mean redo it? Do you have it in, in both in one now or they're, they're, they're two separate things? No, I'm thinking like redo my business, like get back to me being financially independent from before my gym closed. <laughs> so I'm like, oh, okay. like, how do exactly do I do this to get back there? Yeah. So I could have two and like, so if I do them like four, four months at a time, like one four month cycle, I'm promoting macros, one four month cycle, I'm promoting uh, fitness. Yeah, I, I think that what you can do is you focus on one. And what I see happening is people are going to come in to the fitness one, the physical one. Those clients, or those people who are already clients working with you are going to want macros. So, so is there a way like behind the scenes, those current clients can get your macro program, but then you launch it to the public later. That's what I would do. Mm -hmm. Or there could be some kind of like a bundle. Could, 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 cause could you support people in the, the, the physical program and the macros at the same time? But so if people come in, they, they, they're going to do the workout with you, the physical, you could give an option of, do you want to upgrade and do macros at the same time? And, but then later on to the public four months later, then you're selling the macro one. So to the public, you're going to have focuses, but I would give people who are coming to your world and they have a, a relationship with you, they might want both at once. Could you give something like that? Like it's a bundle and they could be doing both with you. Cause I feel like that's, what's going to happen naturally. So to the public, 
separate ones, but when people come in to the, the fitness one first, say, do you want to add on macros now? Cause I feel like naturally people would want to. Yeah. 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 And, and, and then the other one is that like, they're really, I, I, I have three, I have three that I can do. Cause I have the energetic one where I'm really teaching that side. And I wasn't going to bring it up because I was like, one, let me get to the 5k month and just focus on the signature. So I could probably like that one would naturally like come in if people wanted a deeper energetic. Uh, so what my intuition is like, people want the physical first. So people want the fitness and the macros because that's going to get the result. But then over time, as you establish your authority of like, okay, I can help people with the fitness and, and the macros, people are going to be obsessed with you and the results that you get people. And then they're going to want to go deeper into the energetics. So that gets to be part of you. It, it always is going to be, you can sprinkle it into your content, but I would wait until you master the fitness program, the macro program. And then after a year or two or whatever, then you bring in the energetics. Okay. So build the reputation with the fitness, the macros, people are going to, people are going to meet you and you're going to have the vibe, the energetic, just in the way that you are. But I would wait to make that an offer until you've maxed out or not maxed out, but really built the reputation in the first two. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's what I would do. But this is what's going to happen because I know you and everyone does this is you're going to want to get, you're going to get excited and you're going to want to put out like the energy course or put out the offer. You know what I mean? Like the energetics, but put that out in your content, do live streams about it, make content about it. So you're like, you're educating people about it, but wait until you sell it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. 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 Yeah. <laughs> she's like, this is, I, this is, this is, this is what I want to say to so Lauren and a, a lot of people is we, we're not, we're impatient. You want to do it all now. We like, like, you're not the only one, you, like, you know what I mean? But it's like, I, I'm so serious when it's like master, master the basics first, master the fitness program first, master the, the macros first, and then introduce this other thing. It, like the, the, that thing will always be like the energetics course or whatever it is that you are going to do with it will be a million times better. If you, um, wait for the first two programs to, to really build a foundation, mm -hmm. but you can still share like the energies and the way that you connect it all together in your content, but just wait to sell an offer about that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Cool. Yes. Thank you so much. Baby stuff. Okay. Okay. Baby steps. <laughs> Baby steps. Is there anything else that you want to quickly ask while we're on here? Well, I think you've seen my bio and I kind of like, I, I follow so much of what you do. So I reflected it to fitness. Like how, how, um, do you think there's like a cuter, more like lighter, funner way to be like, you're going to get healthier. Like your body's going to get restored and you'll get hot. Like, should I be more playful in Cause I put multifaceted coach and masculine I take out multifaceted mm -hmm. multifaceted doesn't mean anything. Be specific. If you want to like, I help people, I, I help people get hot bodies, like say it how you would say it. So it's like, speak to the result, but say it how you like, like your way, like your personality of saying it, how you would say it. Like you just said, like how I help people get hot. Like that could be your bio, but take out multifaceted. No one, like, what does that even mean? Energy. <laughs> the energy. No, like, no. Okay. It would like in a, in a one liner, you have to be specific and potent, but like multifaceted means nothing. I would, I would be like, oh yeah, she's going to help me get a hot body, but I don't, I don't, I wouldn't know what multifaceted means. Okay. Cause I was trying to incorporate that we're doing energetic body work and then we're doing physical. Body. No. Okay. Just to the point, like what people are going to actually understand. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you so okay. much. We love you. You're welcome. <laughs> I love you. I'll see you in all the places. Lauren's mom, you're the best. Thank you for being on. <laughs> oh my God. So fun.
Okay. okay. So we have a few kind of recurring threads and comments, but okay. we talked about this a little bit last time, but um, a comment from Nicole here. I'd love for Steph to riff on how she taps into her continuous innovation. It's always, always, a, a, you know, a hot topic. So I think that the thing is, is like, I don't overthink. That's a bit, and that's the thing that Jake and I talk about a lot. Like I, my mind is always going. And I just, when I feel like an idea and I, I feel the energy of like, yes, go with it. We start to implement right away. And it's like, so I think a lot of people get caught up because you want to, you're overthinking it or you, you're trying to figure out how to make it perfect. Or is this idea going to work or is it not going to work? Right? Like we all go there, but when I get an idea and it feels like this could be so good, we start to implement right away. And then there's just, there's not much time to overthink. You know what I mean? So I just, I, I don't waste a lot of time because I don't judge myself of like, if it doesn't work, I'm not going to be heartbroken. I'm not going to be upset. You know what I mean? I'd rather just like take action and create. And if it doesn't work, then whatever, it doesn't work. And if it does, then I'm like, great, cool. You know? And so I've just, I talk about the journey. I talk about the process all the time. And that's, that's what I mean by this too, is like, I, I, I love building and I love creating and I'm not afraid to fail. I'm not afraid to suck at something. I'm not afraid to put something out there in front of the world and like, fuck it up. But like, that's the point we get so caught up, like overthinking, is it going to work? Is it not going to work? Or are people going to judge me or whatever? I don't go there because I spent a lot of my life overthinking. I spent 20 some years of my life judging myself overthinking is, is it going to work is it not going to work I spent so much time in my head not doing things and so, as soon as I just let myself start to do things I fell in love with life again because the process got me excited and then I found things that worked and that I created things and and I, I made a lot of mistakes and created things that didn't work but the point was the process allowed me to be fulfilled and find my zone of genius. So kind of a, a long-winded answer there, but it's taking action. So there's a kind of rebuttal <laughs> to that. So Aaron says- I, I love, love this right now. I'm like fired up. <laughs> Aaron says, I love the idea of implementing right away, but could that be overwhelming to our audience? Well, it depends what it is. It, it like, so discernment, right? It depends what it is. It's like, you know, should you- put out the 10 offers that you're thinking about today. No, that would be overwhelming to your audience. But if you have one idea and, and you just act on it today and it's it maybe not an offer, but something else, then I don't think that it's overwhelming. So again, it's discernment. Like we shouldn't be throwing everything out. Like we shouldn't be throwing 10 things out there at once because it could be too much, but you could be working on 10 things behind the scenes and you implement and you showcase one to your audience. Like, I don't think that's confusing. Um, so I had uh, another kind of backup question here, but um, how how do you get success fast? What are your what are your tips <laughs> to be successful quickly? Good lord, I don't know what's happening lately, but any times did you ask this question or you it's coming up? It doesn't matter. Uh, I, 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 got it. I just th this is it, you guys like. Any time that your brain goes to like, how do I do this fast? I just, I, I am not the person to ask because <laughs> it's like someone asked me the other day on the blueprint, like, how do I build an audience fast? And I'm like, I don't know. Like it just, we can't go there. As soon as you're adding, how do I do this fast? The strategies are most likely not going to be long-term sustainable strategies. So how do you want success fast? Well, one, what's the definition of success? What do you want? If you were like, how do I make money today? I don't know, put out a sale, put out an offer, go beg people. Like, you know what I mean? Like, so it, it's really just like, what are you actually asking? And I think anytime someone is like, how do I get something fast? It's most likely because you're feeling insecure with where you currently are at. Like that, that's, you know what I mean? Like, it's like, why, why do you need it now? What is the thing that you actually need now? If you're actually trying to build a sustainable business, you're not creating anything today. That's going to be the thing that, you know what I mean? Builds the, the long-term success. So I think it always comes back to anytime someone is feeling, how do I get something fast? It's because you feel insecure with where you're at, or you feel unfulfilled. 
So this is, again, I bring it, bring it back to like the process, like, what are you doing to build? Do you love the journey? What makes you happy? What are you working towards? You know, like every 99.9% .9 of the things that we're going to be doing in our businesses are going to be things that build the long-term results. So you have to love the short-term act of just building and, and you've got to trust that each tiny piece is a building block to build the result that's going to happen tomorrow. This live stream today is not building me anything that's really going to result in anything today. But these live stream series, as an example, is going to build the brand in five years from now, in 10 years from now. So it's like, I, in, you guys just saw me freak out with Jake. Like, yeah, I love this right now. But there's no result that's happening in this moment for the business from us doing this live stream. But I feel so fulfilled right now. So I'm going to be motivated to consistently do this but it, the result of this is not going to happen for five years that's my answer <laughs> okay what about uh what are your like top three questions that you love to answer oh god i don't like to answer and i love i love all of them what are my top three questions that i love to answer um I don't know. You kind of already answered that question. The journey? No, you just said you love. I love all of them. Yeah, or, yeah. yeah. you just love to answer. I love to answer. I, I really love to answer. Like, I could do this. I said this like a year ago. I said, if I could just get paid to do Q&A for the rest of my life, like, I got it. Like, I just, I love questions. Why? I don't know. Why? No, Jake, I don't know. I did hear, you know, what's so interesting, actually, this was coming up with a client in a private client in my Voxer is I actually, I get asked the same questions all the time. I'm sure Jake, now you've noticed, like people ask me, how do I get results quick or how, about content or about building? Like I get generally asked the same questions over and over again, but I never get sick and tired of answering them because what I've learned is I always bring it back to, it's not just the surface level of the question. It's like, what's going on for that person where that simple answer hasn't clicked yet. And it always comes back to mindset for me. It like, or, or think about the things you're always asking content. How do I make money? How do I blah, blah, blah. You know, the answer. You guys know how to post on social media. You know how to build a brand. You know how to sell your offers. You know what it takes. Why do you keep asking the same question over and over again? Because there's something inside of you that's stopping you from realizing like it is that simple and it, and it is about patience and it is about consistency and it is about mindset and, and it is about the journey. So the reason that I talk about those like more in-depth concepts is because that's the answer to any strategy question. Once we learn the things, we learn the things. Why do people not like how simple it is? Is because energetically we can't handle it because we want it now because we're insecure because we're we we need a result now because of we're trying to prove ourselves or whatever. Like it's like so I get asked the same things over and over again. Slash in business, why do I keep I? I why do I keep uh, teaching hot audience? Why do I keep teaching launch and sell? Why do I keep teaching the same things? that the basics are what we need to master. It's repetition of the same things over time. Anytime that I listen to a very successful entrepreneur or, or build businesses, it is the same concepts, but we repeat them over and over again. Where do people get tripped up is people aren't able to be consistent because all the things I was talking about, they don't like, they don't like the journey. They're trying, they're, they need the result. Now they're being impatient. Like this game is being able to master the same things over and over again. And that's a mindset thing. So, yeah. <laughs> so some more questions kind of like, like, what do you ask your mentor or what would you ask a mentor if you were in your situation? Um, I really, I, I need to start talking about this a little bit more because it, it's quite interesting. And I get asked this a, a, a lot, even from my clients. I'm obviously in a position where I don't, I, the kind of mentorship and support that I need today or ask for today is not the same that I needed three years ago. Right. So then I think the question becomes like, Steph, then why do you keep investing in mentorship or why do you value mentorship for where you're at? 
this, I believe in high level, long-term mentorship from the get-go. So at the beginning, it was like all the things that my clients ask me now, how, like the basics, how to build, what to do, and then navigating the mindset stuff over and over again. Right now, the, w- the way that it is for me is there is pretty much one person and it is my mentor who knows exactly how I feel. Like, you know what I mean? There comes a point where you're going to be making so much money. You're going to have so much success. You're going to have a different level of pressure. You're going to have more people, uh, more problems. It's going to feel a certain type of way. And you don't actually know how it feels until it happens to you. And to have a mentor who knows exactly how it feels is the most valuable thing that you can have. So, um, it's hard for me to answer, like, what questions do I ask my mentor? It's not like I ask specific questions, but it's more so when there's a situation, I know that I can go to her because she knows exactly how it feels. And just that in and of itself helps me deal with whatever the thing is better. Um, and so you guys might be in a space right now where you feel like, I don't know if I need a mentor. Or I don't see the value. I really encourage you to like stay the course with someone because you will get to a certain level of success where you're like, you feel like no one else really understands what you're going through. And that's because not many people have. So be be, consistently being with someone who's way ahead of you, you're going to be so grateful. Yeah. Another question we get a lot, um, but like, what do you do when you feel overwhelmed? How do you handle that? (sighs) I think it it depends a few different things. When I, when I feel overwhelmed, I, I have one is I have the self-awareness of you're feeling overwhelmed right now. So when I'm overwhelmed, it it means I'm in my emotions. So I'm like, okay, I'm overwhelmed. So don't try and make any rational decisions right now. Don't try and, you know, try and fix things right now because you're in your emotion. So with that being said, I try and give myself grace. Like I do what I need to do to just take care of what I call like the human, whether that's just more space or rest or self-care or whatever that looks like, depending on the situation. But the the big thing is I have to remember the context. So if I myself am overwhelmed, I could be upset or frustrated that I'm overwhelmed or I can not make it about me and remember that Steph, you've got a company You've got a business that's bigger than just you. You've got a lot of clients. You've got your team. Kind of like level up energetically to take on whatever it is that is overwhelming me. That's what I would do. So give myself grace, but also remember like, I can't just be upset because I'm overwhelmed. I've got things to take care of. And when I remember the big context of like your, your business, your team, your corporation bigger than just you, then I'm like, okay, there's no other option than to just fix these things. So I feel like it's so easy to stay overwhelmed when you make it just about you. But when I remember it's not just about me, then I go into just problem solving mode. I fix things and I feel better. This week's setup looks fire, Olivia. Yes, we killed it. <laughs> um, I kind of want to jump back. I don't know if people can hear me, so I'm trying to okay. whatever, but um... <laughs> You you were talking about how you always had always believed in mentorship, mm-hmm. and so you you've had a mentor for a very long time. But like, when did when did you start believing that? Was that before you got a mentor or after you got a mentor? Like, when did you realize this was important? Can you guys hear Jake? Hopefully. In the comments, can you hear Jake? That would be cool. Um, so good question. Let me know what they say in the comments if they can hear you or not. Um. I, yes. Okay. So in hindsight, this is why I say to you guys, like get in long-term mentorship if you can, whatever that looks like for you. Because in my experience, in hindsight, having the mentorship, I see the value in it. When I began, I didn't have the evidence of the value, but I, I, I had an intuition of this is really important. Does that make sense? So at the beginning, I didn't really see I didn't, I didn't see the result right away, but then in hindsight, I'm like, oh, I'm so grateful that I, that I had that. So there's just like, there's a knowing this is the other thing that I think is related to this. I see so many people do this is where if there's like a week or a month or a season where you feel like you don't need it, then people stop investing in mentorship. 
But in my experience, when you stay the course, whether you quote unquote need it or not, that's where you actually grow and see the benefit. So the way that I see it is mentorship is not just when you have a problem. Mentorship is not just at the beginning. Mentorship is through the good and the bad. Like there's times where there's, I don't have problems. I don't have questions, but I still benefit from being in mentorship because I elevate the good. I talk about the good. We celebrate the good. So it's expansive. So many people, because we're so conditioned to be like, invest in help when there's a problem or you know, if, if you still have problems and keep investing, but the way that I see it is like invest in mentorship when things are good, stay in mentorship when things are good, get on a call. When all you talk about is how good things are, there doesn't always have to be questions about problems. It, it's like having conversations about things that are good can expand what is already good and gets you thinking beyond maybe what you're already thinking about. Cool. Any other questions, you guys, in the chat? How are we feeling? Do we like this? Any feedback? And don't forget, it, this is what I will say as well. And this is going to be this is going to be a short giveaway. Post so take like a boomerang or a picture or a thing. Post on your Instagram and tag me because we're we're lining up guests for the next episode. So if you want to be on here like Lauren was on here or whatever, cut, like screenshot post on Instagram story, tag me, tag the team and I'll pick a winner later today. Cuz like I mean how fun is this? I'm just obsessed. I could do this all day. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's so fun. This is fire. We love the industry. You guys are amazing. Okay. Any other fire questions before we wrap up? Uh, well, I was just thinking about the TikToks. We have a new batch, whatever, going out. Yeah. A little bit different. <laughs> Can my mom and I pop back on? Lauren? Um, after, maybe on Zoom after we're done streaming. Yeah, yeah, just okay. to not keep it complicated. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah, so we have a new batch of TikToks going out. And a lot of them short answer questions. Um, I just, one of them I wanted to touch on again, your, your favorite things in the industry and your least favorite things in the industry. I mean, this is called the industry. So yeah. So it, good, good thing to boom. I love it. So my favorite things in the coaching industry, and I, I can't remember exactly what I answered on the TikToks. So a few different things, and I would love to know in the chat, if you guys agree, I love the coaching industry because I feel like the coaching industry is just full of creators. Like I'm obsessed with the innovation. I'm obsessed that there's just, I, I come on Facebook, I go on Instagram, I go on TikTok, and I just see innovative people who have an incredible message that they're so passionate about. And, and they're just sharing it with the world in different ways. So I think for me, I mean, this is who I am, but this is, it, it's what I love to see in other people is I just love when people are so passionate about something. I don't care what it is. I don't care what it is, whether it's fitness, health, business, mindset, emotional intelligence, relationship, like, I don't care what it is to see someone so passionate about something and then um, expressing it in creative ways. Now that we have so many different ways to express on social media, that's what makes me, that's what I love in the coaching industry. I also love all the love that I see. There's a lot of love in the coaching industry. I love that we cheer each other on. Like I, I love that. I really feel like when you're in the right net, networks and the right communities in the coaching industry, like I just see people cheering each other on. Like there's so much room for success. There's so much room for abundance. Abundance. There's so much room for everyone to win. And I just, I love that. And that's here. And I want to see more of it more people supporting each other, sharing each, each other's stuff. Like there's so much room for us to even just like collaborate, right? And share, like one share, one share, me bringing people on here. Like it, I don't think people realize how powerful it is that like bringing on Lauren today, like one person could find this video today and find Lauren and be like, thank God that Lauren was brought on this video and they fall in love with Lauren's way and it changes their life and Lauren's life is changed forever. So I just feel like 
the cheering of each other on, but the networking like this, like the one share, the one tag, like these kinds of collaborations are so powerful. So I love this about the industry. There's many more things, but that's what comes up today. Um, I love you, Lauren. And what do I not like? <laughs> well, yeah. Uh, maybe I'll add a what I like on the back end of it. So we end on a positive note. Um, it's, it's not even that it's, it's about, it's not that it's just about the industry. I think that this is in the world. I think that we need to do better with emotional intelligence as um, business owners on social media and coaches on social media. And so what I mean by this is like, you know, if you're dealing with insecurity or you're dealing with unhappiness or you're dealing with not feeling good enough or you're dealing with comparison, you're dealing with money shit, you're dealing with whatever it is. If you're not dealing with that behind the scenes and taking care of your trauma or your wounds or whatever that is, and then you're coming on social media and you're projecting all of that sadness and that hate by saying mean things to other coaches online or hating on people in the comments or you're in coaching containers and but then being out of integrity with commitments or payments like that is just not okay that's not okay and so that comes from unhealed people then projecting things that's just where it comes from and so i have compassion for when this happens and i have empathy and i understand that it comes from negative shit and dark shit but it doesn't make it okay and i think that the the most important thing that we can do as individuals is we have to work on our radical responsibility and our self-awareness you know like you're building a business you're building a business deal with your stuff behind the scenes know when it is emotional response versus when it needs to be kept practical and a lot of people don't have the self-awareness to differentiate and and then that causes problems sometimes and i just think if you could if we can each do better that would be amazing um so yeah the other thing that i will say and and it, as i was going through the tiktoks because i have them all saved on my phone i was like what did i say um this is a positive note and i said this what what do i want to see more coaches do I want to, I really, 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 really want to see more coaches create actual established brands on social media. And I mean, beyond just like your Instagram content, like create a show like this, you know, create something bigger where it's like, you're really creating valuable, fun, entertaining content or shows or whatever that it looks like for you. I think that there's still a lot of what's the word? Like people want to be famous. <laughs> people want to be famous and have these big businesses and have all kinds of people following them or buying from them, but they're not willing to do the work above and beyond. And so I, I know that there's so much talent out there. There's so much drive out there, but I think that there's just something stopping a lot of people. Maybe it's just insecurity or overthinking or whatever from just putting yourself out there and creating something bigger. You know what I mean? Like even this right now, we're on episode two of the industry. Today was a hot mess. We messed up the audio. It was like, who cares? It's not about if it's perfect or whatever. It's about just putting it out there. And I just feel like it's so easy to do something, but why aren't people doing it? You know what I mean? And so I just, I, I believe that the talent and the passion and the wisdom and the knowledge and all the things it's out there, but people are just not doing it for whatever reason. And action is everything. And so I just want to see a little bit more, like there is so much innovation, but I just feel like we're just kind of starting to really branch out a little bit in the coaching space. And I hope that I can inspire people to do their own version of a show like this, whatever that is, just by being like, okay, Steph just did something. And what could I do? Like, what's my version of that? Like build a brand, build build like build um content like this episodes or whatever it is this kind of stuff lasts a lifetime so yeah we good okay yeah. so that was episode two 
That was episode two. I have some things to say. I'm going to sound like a, a broken record. Follow us on TikTok. <laughs> Follow us on the podcast. I think maybe Jake's going to put it in the comments. If not, I will after. It's cool. Um, share on, on your Instagram if you're watching this live or the replay. But this is the most important thing. There is not going to be an episode next week. Right? No, but it's okay. There's not going to be an episode next week because there's just not. However, starting the week after that, every Friday at 10 a.m. inside of this group for the rest of our lives, <laughs> for the rest of our lives will be this. But because we're dedicated, the, dedicating the rest of our lives, we're going to take a week off next week. <laughs> One day off. And then we're, we're going hard. So um, that's, that's what I have to say. And if you guys want to be a guest on, want to want to be featured, share, and I'll be, um, we'll pick someone today and then we'll see you guys on the 30th. I'm having so much fun. You guys are amazing. I'll see you where we are connected. Any final words, Jake? We're good. Uh, I honestly think that's it. We'll look better uh, two weeks from now. All right. See you guys in two weeks. Bye everyone.